To begin uh, creating the headphones, you will need the following. The die uh, movers and shapers, circles from Sizzix and Tim Holtz. And we will be using the largest and the medium sized uh, circles. So you will need four of the largest and two of the medium size. Then you will need strips of chipboard and I'm using the medium weight chipboard which is 1 16th in thickness. Um, two strips of chipboard measure 9 inches by 5 eighths. Two strips of chipboard which measure 6 inches by 5 eighths. And two additional ones which measure 6 inches by half an inch. You will also need four strips of, I'm using here craft cardstock only because it's the um, the most heavyweight cardstock that I have so I will need four pieces uh, which measure roughly two inches by and that measurement is important five eighths of an inch so that they will be exactly the same width as um, these and two of these uh, strips of chipboard and two more which are just two inches by half an inch for two of these uh, strips of chipboard okay so first thing to do is to take the chipboard strips and to spritz them with with water I will start from the longer ones rest of the chipboard strips I will curve and um, and shape offline. So I'm using the plain uh, water in a, um, in a spray bottle and I spray this strip of uh, chipboard from both sides. like this and I'm trying to be really gentle here in order not to rub that strip of chipboard too much and not to peel the layers of uh, paper from it so um, now when it's wet and even before that you could see that to a certain side it's curving better than to the other so when you know to which side exactly it curves more uh, you will start to curve it really really gently by pressing and curving it and shaping it with your fingers once you are done this doesn't have to be perfect so far I just take a paper clip and I clip it here, keep the edges together and clip it with the help of the paper clip. So this is how it looks right now. All right. Then what you have to do is you have to dry it. You can use your heat tool and just speed up the process. Once the ring is dry, you can remove the paper clip and take one of the wider um, strips of craft cardstock that you prepared. Take your glue, and what I do now, I just apply a little bit of glue to half of that. Uh, connecting strip of cardstock and I'm applying it on the inside of the ring in the following way making sure that it cannot be seen and there are no overhanging from the sides of the ring that I'm creating here and I'm really pressing down 
uh, firmly in order to ensure that it is glued down properly to the chipboard ring. Well, it's not a ring yet, but it will be. Okay, so once one half is glued down, I apply glue to the second half of the cardstock and also I apply a little bit of glue here to the edge of the chipboard and I connect two of the edges together and once again I'm pressing down firmly and holding this piece in my hands till it's glued down I go I keep on shaping it here at the area of uh, of the connection point okay and in the meanwhile I'm trying to make it look uh, more perfect to make it really look like a ring without too much of defects and extortion. Then once this is done, what I like to do is I take just a plain scotch tape, clear scotch tape, and then I trim this piece to, I just eyeball it something like half an inch maybe and I apply it here on top of the surface from the front of the ring just to make sure that the surface here is flat too without that bump which is created because of the connection point okay so this is the first ring in the very same way you have to create rings of different sizes from the rest of the chipboard strips that you have. And in order to create that curved um, curved piece that you usually put, put on your head, uh, you will need a piece of cardstock here. I'm using Kraft, which measures 12 inches by uh, 3 inches. What you do is you score it every one inch and then you fold it from the sides uh, towards the middle make sure to burnish the folds I've started from the first one now I will apply glue here in the middle section of the piece of cardstock and I will glue that folded flap down to the middle area of the cardstock. Like this. Now let's do the same with the second flap. Once again I will apply glue. Well it's not important where exactly you apply in the middle or uh, on the side flap. The most important thing is that this piece will be glued down really nicely and as you add the glue it also turns this piece to a, a firmer one. The paper gets more stiff because of the glue. It is still flexible but it's really firmer than before. Okay, so this is what you should have right now. Then what I do is I take well I currently don't take uh, don't have the distress stain in the, um, 
in the black color so I will use the darkest of the ones I have it's walnut, walnut stain and I will color this piece with the distress stain from both sides from this side from the back as well you can add some color to the edges okay and you will leave that to dry once the ink is dry and this strip of paper is completely completely dry I take the distress crackle paint and add a coating of the crackle paint from both sides of the strip 